In the 1930s, a German-Dutch paleontologist named Ralph von Königswald was hunting for fossils in an unorthodox location, a Chinese medicine shop. Being sold under the label of dragon bones, von Königswald found an enormous molar tooth, which, in his wisdom, he identified did not actually belong to a dragon. He tracked down several more teeth and eventually a partial jawbone, which helped him establish that these remains belonged not to a dragon, but something more real and far more scary. Von Königswald deciphered that these bones belonged to an ape, and a big one at that. The discovery being made two years after the release of the original King Kong film could have set some speculative thoughts racing through Von Königswald's mind. A 50-foot ape scaling buildings and snatching humans from below. But before jumping to speculation, he turned to the wider knowledge base to piece together what he had found. The scientific community was astonished. Here was evidence of a primate that dwarfed modern gorillas. But the fossil record was frustratingly incomplete. To this day, we have no complete skeletons of the rest of the animal, only teeth and jawbones. Yet from these few clues, researchers have pieced together an approximate image of this remarkable animal, naming it Gigantopithecus blackie. Since the 1930s, Southeast Asia has been the main discovery ground for samples of this species, with thousands of Gigantopithecus teeth having been unveiled in various locations. This has led the approximations of its morphology to take inspiration from orangutans who call this area home in our present day. This orangutan form is generally accepted for Gigantopithecus. However, many questions remain due to the incomplete nature of the fossil record. Did it move like an orangutan, or more like a gorilla using all four limbs? Did it have a completely different morphology, distinct from any other primates we know? In fact, in the early phases of classification, Gigantopithecus was thought to be closely related to humans, specifically Australopithecus, the last common ancestor of humans and apes. This hypothesis stemmed mostly from its teeth and their similarities with Homo erectus. Scientist Franz Weidenreich hypothesized a gigantic phase of human evolution, with Gigantopithecus evolving into Meganthropus in Java, Indonesia. His hypothetical lineage continued to Pithecanthropus, Javanthropus, and finally Aboriginal Australians. However, Gigantopithecus is now classified as a Ponginae, alongside orangutans and other prehistoric apes like Sivapithecus and Indopithecus. While we may not know its exact morphology, what we do know is that it was large. The largest ape ever discovered, in fact. Based on fossil evidence, it is estimated that adult males of Gigantopithecus could have stood up to three meters tall, or around 10 feet, if they had been able to stand fully upright. However, like most modern great apes, it is more likely that Gigantopithecus was a knuckle walker, given its size. Yet in this stance, its height at the shoulder may have been around 1.5 meters or 5 feet, still towering over any living ape. Its large body mass would have made swinging from tree branches known as brachiation, or extensive climbing less feasible than it is for smaller primates. Instead, Gigantopithecus may have spent most of its time on the ground, using its long arms and strong upper body to support its weight as it moved. If its musculature was anything like that of modern great apes, Gigantopithecus would have been extraordinarily strong, capable of exerting tremendous force when pulling or pushing. Such features would have been useful for pulling down branches to access food, and it could have climbed trees when necessary, though likely at a slower pace and limited to sturdy, low-lying branches. This strength would have also been advantageous for foraging, allowing it to break tough bamboo stalks or uproot plants, or for fending off potential predators or rivals. The ability to deliver powerful blows, much like a gorilla's defensive behavior, would have provided a means to protect itself from threats. If you're enjoying this exploration of the King Kong lookalike, please consider liking this video and subscribing so that we can share more journeys like this together. We'd love to have you with us. Now, let's put this giant ape on the scales. In terms of weight, Gigantopithecus was truly massive with estimates suggesting it could have weighed as much as 500 kilograms, or about 1,100 pounds. This makes it more than twice as heavy as the largest modern gorillas, which can weigh up to around 220 kilograms, or 485 pounds. 
Such a weight would have required strong, thick bones and a powerful musculature to support the animal's immense bulk. Size estimates are based on comparisons with the teeth and jaws of modern apes, such as gorillas and orangutans, extrapolating the likely proportions of the rest of the body from the size of these features, given there are no other fossil discoveries yet. Existing around 2 million to 300,000 years ago during the middle to late Pleistocene era, this colossal creature roamed what is now China, India and Vietnam. The Pleistocene epoch was characterized by dramatic climate shifts, including glacial and interglacial cycles that caused changes in habitats and ecosystems across the globe. The environment that Gigantopithecus inhabited was significantly warmer and more humid than the glacial regions that dominated other parts of the world during the Pleistocene. Southern China and Southeast Asia experienced subtropical and tropical climates where the forests were dense and diverse. These habitats consisted primarily of mixed vegetation with significant bamboo growth as is still seen in the region. Bamboo was likely one of the primary components of the diet for Gigantopithecus. Its thick enamel and large molars suggest adaptations for processing tough fibrous plant material, similar to modern day giant pandas, which also rely on bamboo. Competition for resources was a significant factor that shaped the environment of Gigantopithecus. With other large herbivores like stegodon and rhinoceroses and expanding human populations vying for similar plant resources, Gigantopithecus may have had to specialize its diet or become increasingly territorial. Its large size could have given it an advantage in competing for food, but this would not have entirely mitigated the challenges posed by a rapidly changing environment. These herbivores would have competed for resources like fruit and leaves, potentially driving Gigantopithecus to specialize in the lesser competed and therefore abundant bamboo, as seen in its jaw adaptations. However, hyper-adapting to bamboo may have put the giant ape in an ecological straitjacket. The fluctuating Pleistocene climate and the expansion and contraction of forests would have posed significant ecological challenges for Gigantopithecus. As forests retreated during colder, drier periods, bamboo and other plant resources would have become less available, forcing the giant ape to adapt to more open, grassy environments or migrate in search of suitable habitat. The need to find enough food to sustain its large body size would have been a constant pressure. Not only was there pressure from competitors, but predators too. The Pleistocene Epoch was a time of rich megafaunal diversity, and several large predators coexisted with Gigantopithecus in the subtropical and tropical forests of southern China and Southeast Asia. The Pleistocene was known for its iconic saber-toothed cats, including species like Homotherium and Megantherion. These predators had large, elongated canine teeth that were well adapted for delivering lethal bites to prey. Homotherium, sometimes known as the scimitar cat, was a large, robust predator that could weigh up to 200 kilograms. Megantherion, another saber-toothed cat, was slightly smaller than Homotherium, but had longer, more pronounced upper canines. It was a more specialized ambush predator that relied on stealth rather than speed. In densely vegetated forests, these predators would have had an advantage in getting close to potential prey, making young or smaller Gigantopithecus individuals vulnerable to surprise attacks. Leopards like Panthera pardus and large ancient tigers such as Panthera tigris acutidens would have shared the same dense forests as the Gigantopithecus and have been even more formidable than the saber-toothed cats. Weighing up the 350 kilograms, the Wansian tiger in particular could have feasibly taken down a Gigantopithecus if particularly weak or caught off guard. If caught in a direct confrontation, however, the Gigantopithecus may have the upper hand. This is, of course, due to its size, as we have discussed, in combination with its long and powerful limbs as a form of physical defense. But comparing to modern great apes, Intimidation is a common defense strategy, and it is likely that Gigantopithecus employed similar behaviors. The ape may have used its size to appear even larger by standing upright, raising its arms, and perhaps even shaking branches to create a threatening display. Such behaviors are seen in gorillas, who beat their chests and perform mock charges to ward off threats. Gigantopithecus could have produced loud vocalizations 
much like modern great apes do. Orangutans, for example, have long calls that can resonate over large distances, and gorillas can make deep, rumbling sounds to warn off potential threats. It is plausible that Gigantopithecus had a similar repertoire of vocal signals that it used to establish its presence and deter predators or competitors. One thing Gigantopithecus could not fight was the retreat of its environment and its lack of adaptability to the change around it. Too large and too specialized, this giant ape is theorized to have gone extinct between 295,000 to 215,000 years ago in correlation with increased seasonality and major environmental turnovers, as forests turned to savanna and food became more scarce. Some scientists even suggest the interference of early humans, possibly competition or from hunting, although there is little evidence. Regardless, this marks the end of this magnificent creature. Once more, if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, as we've certainly enjoyed having you with us. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in our next video, and we will see you there.